Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a demonstration of how to stitch on perforated paper. I have actually received a couple of requests for this, so I thought, why not? How do you like my eye needle minder? <laughs> that thing is creepy, isn't it? It looks like a real eye close up. Yeah. But in the spirit of Halloween, I thought I would use that. One thing I discovered this morning when I was preparing for this video, you know, I wanted to put the paper in a Q-snap just for demonstration purposes. Well, it's in a Q-snap, if you can see. And I was actually pretty amazed at how good it went into the Q-snap. It did not rip the paper. This paper is painted, though. I'm not sure if, like, the antique brown paper and the white paper because they naturally come in those colors. I don't know if it would tear it, but I was really, really surprised. I mean, it is drum tight. It stretched it, pulled it like it does fabric. So I guess you could give that a shot. Now the Mill Hill kits though, they only come in, the perforated paper I wanna say is probably six by six. So there are not, well, is there a Q-snap that's four by four? No, I think the smallest is 6x6. Six six. This is an 8x11. So I wanted to do this just to demonstrate my stitching, but yeah, I was really surprised I was able to put this on a Q-snap. But normally, you, know, you can hold perforated paper in your hand because it's stiff and it's usually not too big. However, how I like to actually do perforated paper is put it on mini stretcher bars with tacks like you would use for needlepoint. So here's a piece of paper that I attached to, you know, the mini stretcher bars and uh, with tacks. This keeps it taut. It keeps it from bending. It also keeps it from wearing out or getting oils on it from your hands or anything. And these mini stretcher bars are really, really light. So not bad at all to hold in your hand. So most perforated paper that I've come across is painted. You know, they have a bunch of different colors. So you have to be careful of the right side and the wrong side to stitch for paper because most of the time there is a right side and a wrong side. The right side is usually more smooth. It is the painted side. So if you look at this side and then if you look at this side, this side is white because they painted it. So you always want to make sure you're stitching on the correct side of the paper. So I think a lot of perforated paper suggestions is to use three strands of thread. I never do that. <laughs> I always just use two strands because I can use the loop method. And it's just easier to handle as far as getting the strands to lay right two strands versus three. I have never really had a problem with coverage or being unsatisfied with the coverage. So let's get to stitching. Now, this needle that I have here is a size 24. You could even use a size 22 needle. Do I have any right here? No. You could even use a size 22 because what you're gonna see, okay, I'm just gonna start stitching. Let me try to get you guys closer. Okay, what you're going to see is that the needle, unlike in fabric, now I'm using the loop method just like I would normally do. The needle is not going to stick, if that's the right word, in your fabric. I mean, Jesus, it's not gonna stick in your paper like it is in fabric because fabric is just closer knit and yeah, I don't know if I'm explaining that right. So you have to be careful because your needle will slip through the holes. I've dropped my needle plenty of times. Now I also am really careful to really try to lay these threads to also help give more coverage. I'm just gonna stitch a block of like 15 so you can see what it looks like. I just stitch like I normally stitch and the thread just okay. came out of the needle. There is my block. 
And I don't know why that's not focusing. There is my block of 15 stitches. You can see the coverage is not perfect. I'm okay with that though. It looks like it does when I stitch dark threads on light fabric on 28 count. But once you get all your, you know, your whole project done and everything surrounding it, you won't even notice that in my opinion. So now if you're using over dyed threads where you're supposed to complete each stitch individually, you are not supposed to use the loop method. So what do you do? You use what is called an away knot or a waist knot. I actually showed this in a previous video. I forget my minute. I need to cut the threads. Yeah, I actually showed this in a previous video and I actually forget which one it was. Oh, I think I was showing you how to stitch with over dyed threads. <laughs> and so I was showing you different options of how to start your thread. And because on now on perforated paper, just like on fabric, if you are starting a stitch and there are surrounding stitches and I'll demonstrate that I just will tuck the, my needle, the starting thread underneath other stitches that are right by it. Like, let's say I was going to stitch right next to here with over dyed. I would flip this over. Let me cut that. I would just tuck my needle underneath a few of these. Now it's going to be tight, so just be careful, but I would just do that. And then pull it so there's just, and then once you start a couple stitches, it will, um, why is that not, there we go. Once you do a couple stitches, it will anchor itself and be fine. But as far as the a waist knot, you want to tie a knot in the end of the thread. And I will actually do this when I stitch on perforated paper. I will actually do this a few times. Like I will make that knot pretty big because there, that should be big enough. So twice because it will slip through the holes if it's not big enough. So let's just say I'm going to stitch over here. If you're doing a row of, let's say five stitches, you want to have your knot on either side of those stitches. I hope that made sense. Like, let's just say I was going to stitch one, two, three, four, five. I would put my needle from the front out here, pull it through until it catches the knot that I made. See how that's stopping? Then I'm going to count over my to my five. And like, let's say here is the first one. Oh, my finger caught. Did it pull it through? No. My finger had caught the thread on the back. Oh, it did catch it. Damn it. There we go. Let me thread my needle again. My fingers are dry on the ends and so they will catch the thread sometime and pull it right out of the eye of the needle. Okay. You want to come over because when you do that, if you look on the back, see that line, you're going to stitch over that line. You're going to then stitch up to the knot. So let me do that and I will demonstrate. I hope I explained that right. Because as you do these couple of stitches, you are in effect, you know, covering over you're anchoring this thread down. Now, obviously I should be completing these one by one because I'm supposed to be stitching with over dyed threads. You would, you would do these one by one.
Okay, let's just say, okay, I'm at the end of my row now and I've anchored that on the back. Cause look, if I flip it over, you can see you have anchored that thread. Now you need to get rid of that knot. So what I do, when also when I make the knot, I leave a, a big enough of a tail that I can grab it. You pull it, I pull it, and then I snip right below the knot. And then you can't see it. So if you flip over your work again, you'll see it's anchored. It's not coming out. It's not coming out anywhere. So that's how I stitch on perforated paper. And for beading, the same thing. I will use, however, for beading, I will do two strands of floss versus Nymo thread just because it's easier to be able to start with the loop method when beading. But that's it, guys. Stitching on perforated paper is actually very easy. And I have stitched many designs on perforated paper that were not called to be stitched on perforated paper. You can stitch anything on perforated paper as long as you have a big enough piece of it. There's nothing saying that you can't stitch whatever on there. Perforated paper comes in a lot of colors if you look at one, two, three stitch and it's actually very inexpensive versus fabric. And if you want to finish something into an ornament or on canvas or any other myriad of ways, it's not difficult. So I hope this helped. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.